Alrighty then, welcome to this video. In this tutorial, we're gonna talk about how to create a database in PHP My Admin. I am Dave Kidd from Skillforge. Uh, this video is just gonna show you how to create this database and then create a little script in PHP to connect to it. The first thing you're gonna want is this thing called XAMPP. Uh, it is this all-in-one package that gives you everything you need to be able to run databases and PHP and, and things of that sort. PHP is a server-side language. So like JavaScript and HTML, you can just write that on your computer and test it from the browser, but PHP doesn't work that way. You gotta have an environment that supports and can run PHP. So XAMPP is one of the many packages out there. I like it a lot uh, just because obviously it's free and it's cross-platform. It works for any of these different uh, things that you would ever want it to work for. Really Mac, Windows, Linux, whatever you're running, it'll run. So you want to go to their website, apachefriends.org, uh, and then download whatever one you're working with. And I'm not really going to show how to install it because it's pretty simple. Just download it, run it, keep all the default things, and just let it install everything. It's not too bad. Okay, so once it's done, uh, you're going to have something like this. This is a XAMPP control panel. And you can see that I'm running Apache in MySQL. you got all these different buttons here. Uh, you can stop them if you want. Uh, but we need to have both of these running to be able to do uh, what we want to do here. So make sure that you run both of those, Apache and MySQL. Okay, once that's running, on your computer, uh, XAMPP by default runs off of localhost. Now, when, I, when you type in localhost the first time, it's going to show some welcome screen. I got rid of that. But if you want to access that folder where everything in localhost is, you can come over here to Apache and go over to Explorer, not Apache here, but at this Explorer button. And that's gonna bring you into the XAMPP folder. And then your local folder where everything you wanna run, where you wanna put that is inside of this htdocs folder. So there was an index file in here that I just renamed to intro. So now I can kind of get a list of everything that's in my htdocs. Okay, but anyways, the main thing here that we care about is just make sure Apache and MySQL are running. Apache is the web server, MySQL is all the database stuff. So we want to create a database. So the way we do that is we need to access PHP My Admin, which comes with XAMPP. So there's two ways you can do that. On the MySQL, you can click on Admin, and that's going to take you out to it. Or you can just type that in, localhost slash PHP My Admin. First time you log in, root is not going to have a password. It'll put root in there. Don't put in a password and just hit go. I've already thrown and created a password, so I'm going to do that. Uh, once you log in, you can just say change password, and then you can set up a password that way. Now, what we want to do is just create a new database in here. Now, back in the day, you had to use SQL commands. You had to have some sort of command prompt and go in there and type in the commands, and it would do all this behind the scenes. But PHP My Admin is basically like Windows, like what Windows was for DOS. DOS was a bunch of commands as well. Windows came in with this graphical user interface, changed the world that we live in, right? So it's kind of the same thing here. PHP My Admin is this graphical user interface for SQL. So I'm in here. Um, we're not going to go over everything, but the main thing I want to do here is click New, and I'm going to create a new database. Um, and I'll just call it some cool database okay now what you create here you want to remember because uh, later on to be able to connect to this database and do things with it you need to remember what you called it okay so i'm going to hit create okay and then you need to think about how many uh, columns you want in this so the way this works is we have this database here and databases are made of tables and inside of those tables they have rows and columns so now that we've created the database, now we're creating a table inside of it. Um, and I will call it, I guess, people. And this will be a really simple database. I'm gonna get their name and email, that's it. Maybe I want this to be a mailing list database or something. So actually we're gonna have three columns and I'll show you why here in a minute. So we got name and email and we're gonna have a third column that I'm gonna call ID which is going to be a primary key, which we'll talk about here in a few seconds. So I got the, the table called people, and I have three columns in there. I'll hit go. All right. So the first column I'm going to call ID, uh, and this is going to be auto-incrementing. And so I come over here, 
I'm going to kind of scroll over to this AI section and I'm going to check that. And when I do that, it says, oh, you want to make this a primary key? And I hit go. And what I've done here basically is just said, okay, this I'm not going to have a lot of control of. Just at any time something gets inserted in the database, it's automatically going to be assigned an ID. And that ID is going to be auto incrementing. And so the first one that goes in there will be one and then two and then three and then four. And this, is, this would be what I would use to individually identify people in this database. No one will have an ID that's exactly the same. And that's why it's that primary key and the auto incrementing will automatically assign an ID to whatever gets inserted in that database. Okay, next thing I'm gonna throw in here is a name and that's gonna be a varchar, so character. Basically just means I'm gonna put in some characters. Okay, the next one I'm gonna throw in is email. That's gonna be a varchar as well. And then I just say how long I want these to be. Just for kicks and giggles, I'm gonna throw in 100 on all of these. Okay. Don't think I'll ever have a name that's more than 100 characters. Same with the email, same with the ID, but oh well, I'm just going to throw it in there. So I got the ID, got the name, I got the email. Okay, I got the type of value it's going to be. Okay, and then I have their links. And then I've made that one a primary key, the ID. So once I do that, I'm just going to scroll down here and hit save. Okay, down here, uh, this is the console here. That will usually be down here. You can click on the console and this will show you the, the SQL that it created to do what I just told it to. And I come up here and now I can see I have this table with three columns, an ID column, a name column, an email column. This one's auto incrementing and you can delete them if they want. You can change them if you want. Uh, again, you don't have to know any of the SQL to do this. You just go in there and click and drag and do things and it will do what you want. Okay, so now uh, we're going to create a little script that will connect to this. Now, one other thing to be aware of is so you have the root user. Uh, so if I come on here and I click on this database and then I come over here to privileges, it'll show me all the users that have access to this. Now, I created one for Santa because I did another little project a while ago, but we have this root. So the root user that you have right now should have access to this database. So whatever password you gave it when you changed the password, you're just gonna use that, okay? But if for some reason the root user isn't working, you can come in here to privileges, click on your database, go to privileges, and then just add a user account. And then what you do is just give it a username. The host, you're gonna to wanna to be localhost because you're ZAMP, you're running it locally on your machine and then you're gonna just put in uh, a password for that user. Okay, and then you'd come down here. I would just give them global privileges, just check everything, and then come down there and hit go. Okay, that's just if for some reason that root user can't have access to this uh, database that you created. All right, so now we go to the ZAMP, go back to here, Explorer, and we're gonna go inside of that htdocs folder. Okay, and I'm just going to create a new folder here, and I will call it, not a shortcut, I will go new and go folder. Uh, I'll just call it dbex for database example. Okay, in there, I'm going to create a new file. I'll just do text document, and I'm going to call it db.php. Now, if you're on Windows, it's going to yell at you, hey, that's going to be kind of unstable. No, it's not. I'm just going to hit yes. Now you're gonna need some sort of text editor. It can be just, it can be anything you want. The one I use that I recommend is Brackets. It's really good. It's created by Adobe. It's free, it's cross-platform as well. There's Atom, A-T-O-M, that's a really good one. Um, Notepad++ is good for Windows. I mean, there's a bunch of them out there that's, that, that are pretty good, um, but I'm just gonna go with Brackets here. So that's gonna be the one I'm gonna use. So, you can see the brackets is already attaching itself to it. All right, so that comes up. Okay, um, I don't want this to be split, so I'm gonna say no split. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is create a PHP script here. Now we're gonna use what's called PDO, PHP Data Objects. 
This is an object-oriented way to access databases. The good thing about PDO is it is compatible with many different types of databases, MySQL, all these other different types. So if you learn how to do PDO and you use PDO, uh, your databases, your database scripts are going to be a lot more compatible with all the different types of databases um, that are out there. Okay, so in uh, PHP, you do variables with the dollar sign. Okay, and I go DSN because this is a data source. Um, and we're going to basically tell it where the database is and which database we're going to mess with. So we're going to say MySQL, and the host that we're going to mess with is going to be equal to localhost. Okay, and then we're going to separate that, and we're going to say the database name. Now remember, if you forget, you can always go back. All right, so my database down here, some cool database, some cool DB. So that's what I'm going to use there. Okay, and I don't want the quote there. Okay. So that's what it's going to use to connect to the database, this database object here, the, the PDO. Okay, and we got to set up a variable. Uh, mine was root, but these are strings or characters or words, so they need to be in quotes. Set up another variable, and I'm going to put in my password in quotes as well. Mine is very secure password, so watch out for that. Okay, and those are the three things uh, that a PHP data object needs to be able to connect to a database. So next thing that we're going to do here is do a try catch block. So we're going to try to connect to the database. If we can't, we're going to catch the error that happens and then print that error out to the page. So what we're going to try is set up a new variable called DB. And we're going to set up this new object, this new PDO object. And we're going to give it the connection uh, information that we gave it up there on line two. Uh, we're going to give it the username, <clears throat> and we're going to give it the password. Okay, those are the three things that this object is going to need to be able to try to connect to that database. Okay, and then I'll just throw in here a little echo. <clears throat> okay, this echo will run if uh, the database connects. Okay, now if it doesn't work, we're going to catch the error, and the error is st stored inside of this PDO exception. Okay, and I'm going to store it inside of this variable called E. So PDO exception is this built-in command that just knows, okay, if any errors happen, it's it's called a PDO exception, and I'm going to save it inside of this E variable. So I'll set up another variable called error message, and then I'm going to use that variable E that would be holding it, and I'm going to use this built-in command called get message. Okay, and then I'm going to exit, in other words, just get out of the whole script. So this notation here, what this is doing, is it's going inside of this object E, which holds the exception, and then this is what that means, is it's basically going inside of this object that holds the error, and then it's using this built-in command called get message, this built-in function or method, and so uh, we would have to do, well, actually, we need to do this we'd have to echo it out to the page as well so it would go out there get the error message basically store it inside of error message and then we would echo it to the page so if something goes wrong and it doesn't work then it'll give us an error message so it goes out here tries to connect if it does it'll echo we've connected if it doesn't it'll create an error and we go grab that error message inside of e which is that pdo exception stores it inside of error message, and then it echoes that out to the page, and then it exits the whole script. Okay, so the way we can test this now is we just come over here, type in localhost. Localhost will take us inside of htdocs. Okay, so now I want to go inside of my folder dbex. So dbex for database example. Okay, and then I'm going to run that file that I just created, so db.php. Okay, and there we go. You have connected, so it looks like it worked. 
Now, if I come over here and you know accidentally mess up the, the login, okay, now I'm starting to get some error. So this is the exception to get, that got caught, and now I'm ac echoing it to the page. So access denied for user roo at localhost using password. So that's the type of error that you would, you would get if it wasn't working. All right, guys, so PDO is a good thing to know. Um, any questions, feel free to always reach out to us or you can take one of our courses. It's obviously the point of these videos is to let you guys know we exist and that we're here hopefully to help you with your training needs and, and help you learn this stuff so you can go back into your job and, and feel confident about things that you need to do. So thanks for watching this. Uh, yeah, hope you guys have an awesome day. We'll see you later.